Yo, yo, what is up? What is up? In this episode, I'm going to talk about a subject that you are probably going to hear a lot over the next 11 to 12 months. It is Wimbayama or Scoop. Scoop Wimbayama. Who will be the top pick in the 2023 NBA draft? I'll make a case for both. Stay tuned. Happy Monday. This is the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, which is your daily NBA draft podcast. I'm Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBADraftJunkies.com. And I am excited to say that this is my first episode covering the 2023 NBA draft class. One of my favorite parts about this time of year right after the draft is a new draft class. I love finding or or researching new prospects. I love pulling up stats, just watching some of the guys that I kind of overlooked because they weren't in the current draft cycle. In some cases, like for college students or or the college players, they are maybe have been, maybe they're better off going back to school. And so just kind of projecting the improvements they'll make. And then in the case of the two players I want to talk about today, Victor Wimbayama and Scoot Henderson both were not eligible for the 2022 NBA draft. But if they were, I personally think both would have been top five picks. They just weren't eligible. They're not old enough. And over the next few months, I'm I'm sure all season long, we are going to be hearing debates about Victor Wimbayama, Scoot Henderson, as those two right now are the two favorites to be the number one pick. But of course, things can change. I was looking back at some of the posts that were made around August last year, and it was like a, it was no clear cut favorite to be number one, but in most mocks or big boards or articles talking about the 2022 NBA draft, Jabari Smith wasn't mentioned. I mean, Paolo Bencaro was mentioned, Chet Holmgren was mentioned, Jaden Hardy was mentioned as a possible number one candidate, so was Yannick Sosa, and even Jalen Duran, but only one or maybe only two of those guys ended up being really in consideration, which was Ben Carroll and obviously Holmgren. Only two guys were really in consideration for the number one pick. We had breakout performance. Like you can say Jabari Smith, even though he was a top 10 recruit out of high school, I don't think anybody thought that he was going to be pretty much the favorite to be the number one pick throughout the majority of the college basketball season. And even the the draft cycle. I mean, it wasn't until at least 48 hours before the draft that people started thinking that there's a chance that he could fall. And to my surprise, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people's surprise, he ended up falling down to number three, which definitely benefits the Houston Rockets. I feel like he's the guy that they probably would have taken number one overall if they had the number one pick. So they ended up getting him with the third pick. All right. So in, in, in this particular class, I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see how it pans out simply because the two top players in this class aren't playing college basketball. Victor Wimbayama is going to be in France. He just transferred to Paris basketball. And then Scoot Henderson is playing for the G League Ignite, right? So, you know, a lot of times people may think the class is weak because you're not going to, well, let let me rephrase this. Sometimes people judge a class based off of the guys that are playing on TV, right? And so Wimbayama is not going to really be seen on TV by the American audience. People are just going to be hearing about him. There's not going to be really a lot of games or opportunities for him to build like a fan base or create a buzz for casual fans in the States. And then you can say the same thing about Scoot Henderson. He's playing for the Ignite, but you look at... I mean, Jalen Green kind of had had a buzz, but you look at the Ignite and they're not going to be able to, they're not going to have the games like the March Madness, the ESPN Big Mondays or, or, or the big ESPN games. So I wonder like as far as creating a major buzz for this class with the, with the casual fans, that's to me going to be one of the biggest storylines I'll be looking forward to seeing this season. And then you can also make a case that uh, another it's a group of twins, their brothers, the Thompson twins that are playing for Overtime Elite are also going to be playing out of the 
public eye in, in a sense for the casual fans. So it's going to be very interesting to see what type of buzz is created around this class because many people feel like this 2023 class is, is going to be loaded with talent. I mean, there are some good college players that, that are going to be playing on TV or whatever, but some people feel like four of the top five players in this class are not playing college basketball. So again, that is going to be very interesting. And even for like myself, you know, like I've decided to make a living covering the draft. And now that I'm on NBA big board.com is behind the paywall and people are paying for exclusive content. It's, it may be a challenge for me to have a, you know, maybe to generate revenue off of this class simply because, you know, like Zion Williamson, for example, Zion was, he, I mean, he had like this crazy built in fan base. He was, he was compelling. He was someone that was well liked coming into the draft. I mean, you can look at the sneaker deal that he had. I mean, Zion was such a, a huge name that people wanted, you know, to hear and, and read about anything involving Zion. This past class with Chet Holmgren and Paolo Bancaro, I thought we had some pretty good storylines there, but it seemed like it didn't capture the same attention as the Zion class or some of the other classes. So it'll be, you know, interesting to see how 2023 ends up panning out. Like I said, with arguably four of the top five players are not going to be playing in college basketball this season. All right, so let's talk about Victor Wimbayama. Victor Wimbayama is a name that if you've been following basketball or following like, you know, scouting and, and draft classes, it's a name you've probably been hearing about for two to three years. I feel like last summer was really like his coming out party or his breakout party when he played at the under 19s. He was easily, easily, in my opinion, the best player at the under 19s. And if it wasn't, and let, let, I'm going to just keep it 100% real. If it wasn't for him getting in foul trouble, we probably would have lost. We, as in Team USA, probably would have lost that game against France in the gold medal game. Shout out to Kenny Lofton Jr. for saving the country because Wimbayama was, was dominating that game. And in that particular game, if you look at Team USA's roster, you had Johnny Davis, you had Jaden Ivey, Chet Holmgren, Patrick Baldwin Jr., Peyton Watson. I mean, those are five first-round picks just off the top of my head without really even thinking about it. And Wimbayama, like I said, in my opinion, was clearly the best player on the floor in that tournament and that day. So shout-out to Kenny Lofton Jr. for saving Team USA. So with Victor Wimbayama, he is, you're going to hear the word unicorn thrown around a lot. He is 7'2", has like a reported 7'8 wingspan, is very fluid, fluid and agile. All right, so he has some similarities to Chet, but this is what I find crazy. Victor Wimbayama, the last time I looked, was listed at 229 pounds. Now, I don't know how true that is, but if he is, in fact, 229 pounds, that means he is at least 30 pounds heavier than what Chet is reported. I think Chet is, last I saw, was like 195. I, from my eyes, now I wear glasses, so my, my vision isn't the best. But from my eyes, there's no way Wimbayama is 30 pounds heavier than Chet Holmgren. But similar as far as build, uh, I think that both are, are, are tough. And it, it's very, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see why some people see Wimbayama as that much better than, than Chet Holmgren. He is a few years younger. I think... Wimbayama is so young that he could actually play in the under 19s again. So he was, I think he just turned 18 years old. But he is very fluid and agile. He is one of the best players I've ever seen at transitioning from defense to offense. Like he can alter a shot on one end and be the first man down the court on the other end. Like I said, very fluid, agile. I mean, super long. He's automatically a vertical lob threat because he's 7'2 and if Mark Williams had a 9'9 stand and reach I wouldn't be surprised if Wimbayama has a stand and reach of 9'7 maybe even 10 feet I don't know I mean dude is long I mean like his arms I mean, his wingspan is crazy so he's automatically a vertical lob threat again he, he is skinny he, he did play against grown men in the Euro League 
and in in France. So he didn't really get a lot of post up opportunities because he just doesn't have the strength. But the few post up opportunities I did see, even though the numbers weren't good, he has the footwork, the balance, the touch. It's just he doesn't have the strength to establish real low post position. But what makes Wimbenyama special, in my opinion, is is that he is comfortable playing like off the ball on the perimeter. Like you can run plays for him and you know maybe even like some pin downs or some action sets and he does have some some ball handling skills needs to tighten up his handle a little bit but i mean talent wise this this kid is phenomenal and we haven't even talked about the defensive end he is like i said long incredible shot blocker but has the agility and fluidity and coordination to defend out in space i think that's what's going to make him special so i think that there's a chance he could be like this rudy gobert type defender but he's a lot more fluid and agile and he he's projects to at least be a better defender in space and i think that that is just what's going to make him special i've seen some comparisons to rudy gobert with a jump shot rudy gobert with chris Dapp's porzingis offensive skill set and if you get those two combined into one player then you you have an all nba player you have a franchise star i mean you have someone that can make your team one one of the better teams in the league every year. Now my concerns about Wimbenyama right now are obviously he needs to bulk up and because he is thin even though I think like I said that 229 just does not sound real. Even though he is thin, he is going to have to obviously like I said get stronger but the biggest concern for me is that he does have this tendency to hunt for highlights. Like, I saw one play. I don't even know what he was thinking. Shot a corner three. He must have thought he was Steph Curry. He turned around and looked at the bench and ran back down on defense before the ball went in the rim. I mean, he missed it. It, it looked like that. I'm sure you guys have seen that, like, Nick Young photo that's been going around on social media the past few years where he's like, He's turning around and his hands are up. And then you look at the the picture of the ball like misses. Wimbayama did that. He does have a tendency to try to throw, you know, highlight reel, one hand skip passes. He's still young and he does have a lot of development. But that is one of my concerns. Now, even though he's shown flashes of being able to shoot, the shot is still a, it's still a work in progress. The form looks good. The touch looks good. It's just not going in at a high clip but i think that can be easily fixed and then of course he struggles with physicality but overall i think right now you you have to say that Wimbayama is the favorite to be the top pick in the draft unless scoot henderson passes him up and i will tell you a little bit more about scoot henderson but first i want to talk to you about bet online which bet online was the title sponsor of today's episode i am sorry that i did not let you know at the beginning but BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest. And the easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, shout out to each and every person that has made this NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. Thank you for this whole 2022 NBA draft cycle. I know it was big for me. It was life changing from me going to Europe for the season, me getting the call from Chad Ford asking me did I want to take over the NBA big board, then just some of the connections I made going to the NBA combine. I mean, it was a great, great year. And I've been hearing, you know, I've been getting a lot of different compliments about how well the the Locked On NBA Big Board staff and crew and everybody involved from Richard Stayman to Leaf Tulane to Sam Ferris helped keep people updated or, you know, just, you know, gave out so much information on on the prospects that when their teams made their choices, they felt like they knew a little bit more about the guys. So once again, shout out to all the listeners out there and the NBA Big Board crew, staff, 
team, whatever you want to call us, I think, you know, I'm biased. You've heard it before. I think we, we are the best in the business. All right, let's get to Scoot Henderson. Now, Scoot made like this crazy confident decision to not only skip his, I think he what, skipped his junior year or senior year of high school. He is, I mean, I think he's the next great point guard prospect. Maybe this could be a stretch here. I have a quote that I say for later on that someone told me about Victor Wimbayama. But Scoot Henderson could be like the best point guard prospect maybe since Derrick Rose. And I'll just give you some of my, my notes on Scoot Henderson. He is an impressive, crazy, explosive athlete. But what I like most about him is that he is a very, very, like I said, impressive athlete. But he has this ability to change speeds and gears. And he has like this pace to where he's not just one speed and one speed only. If there was a little knock I had about J.D. Ivey is he just has that one speed. And it's that blow by speed. Same for maybe Ja Moran, even though Ja has a little pace. But Scoot Henderson has like this this pace and this smoothness to his game to where he just is literally impossible for defenders to stay in front of because he changes directions and speed. So maybe this is a bad comparison, right? So when you watch Luka Doncic play, one of the things that he does well and he's mastered is his ability to change speeds, change you know, change of pace. Like, you can't speed him up or you can't slow him down. Now, again, like I said, this may be a bad comparison to some. I feel like James Harden has that too. He doesn't, I mean, he's not like this freaky athlete, but in his best days, people couldn't stay in front of him because he knew how to, you know, lull defenders to sleep, change speeds, gears, just had this this crazy pace to his game. Well, Scoot Henderson has a little bit of that on top of being like Derrick Rose, Steve Francis, John Morant, Jaden Ivey, explosive. I mean, he has excellent burst. His first step is incredible. He can create his own shot off the dribble. He has a strong frame, especially for a kid. I mean, he's so young, but his body is mature. But then what makes him special on top of all of that is he has large hands. Now, having large hands is a huge advantage around the rim because think of it like you playing on a Nerf hoop and you can palm the ball or you can do all type of stuff around the rim. I mean, I think that's what made Jordan so great around the basket. I know one of the things Kobe said was that he wishes that he had Jordan's hand size because when you have huge hands, I mean, it's again, think of you playing like basketball with a grapefruit. And when you're around the rim, you can do all type of crazy stuff and if you watch scoot that's the one of the first things that stands out to me is how big his hands are he can palm a ball off the dribble i mean that's like michael jordan chris weber type hands and he he has this on a guard frame so i think that's going to make him just literally unstoppable around the rim again like i say he has great pace he's an aggressive slasher and an incredible athlete vertical athlete finishes above the rim and then, like, as far as, like, the comparisons to Derrick Rose, I think he's a much more advanced shooter than D. Rose was at the same stage, especially as far as, like, the pull-up dribble. I think, like, D. Rose was so explosive, and then he slowly kind of developed the, the pull-up jumper because he could get to the rim anytime he wanted to on the high school level. And Scoop was the same way, but he has, like, a great pace as far as, like, getting to his pull-up, very smooth, and I think that is what separates him from some of the other elite athletic point guard prospects in the same stages. I think he's a much better shooter. And he's still, again, like last year was supposed to be, I, I, I want to say like his junior year in high school or senior year. I, I forgot my years are all mixed up. So Scoot Henderson, I think his shooting ability is going to make him, you know, or at least it puts him ahead of some of the other guys that had a similar style of play. And like I said, I keep saying it, but he's explosive, but under control. That is one of the things that is rare to find, especially from a teenager. He is a terrific pick and roll ball handler as far as scoring out the pick and roll. He is a, oh, as far as the jump shot, shot 45% on pull-up jumpers. Again, this is a teenager. Overall for the season, he averaged 14 points, five rebounds, three assists, shot 43% overall. Now the concerns are... Even though he does show flashes as a solid passer, I think that's probably one of the biggest areas that he'll need to improve on as far as, like, 
being a, a, a better point guard and a better decision maker, even though the sister turnover ratio is positive, I think that's a very easy fix. But the biggest concern is the jump shot and as far as catch and shoot threes. Now, when he has a, has a rhythm shooting off the dribble, he's money. But like most guys that are very talented scorers off the dribble, they very, very rarely are in situations where they're you know, don't have the ball in their hands and they have to shoot catch and shoot jumpers. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, I was working with a a player. I won't mention his name, but a good friend of mine. He was a dynamic scorer in high school and college. He got to the NBA and he had to have a major reduction in his role and his usage. So he went to a team that had a couple max players. And now he's in a role that if he was on the court with them, they were going to be the primary ball handlers, not him, even though that was his strength. So he really, really struggled on catch and shoot jumpers. And my particular assignment that um, his agent gave me was to go live in the city with him. And after practices at night, we needed to get up four or 500 catch and shoot three point jumpers every night, every night that he was home or whatever on his off days, because they felt like, the catch and shoot jumper would allow him to be a complimentary player, you know, to the superstars that he was playing with for the first time in his life. And so it, it may sound simple, but if you just really think about it, a guy like let's let's use Derrick Rose, for example. How many times prior to going to the NBA did Derrick Rose give the ball up and then get it back in a catch and shoot situation? Most of the time, if he shot a jumper, it was off the dribble. So I think that is the biggest I guess area that I want to see Scoot make improvements on this summer, but you, you can't help but be crazy impressed by the fact that he went from high school to the G League, averaged 14 points per game, and he wasn't even like a high school graduate. He's still supposed to be in high school. I mean, I don't even know if he was barely old enough to get his driver's license or probably just had, I don't even know if he can drive yet, but 14 points in the G League against grown men is is, is very Very impressive. And that's why I think that if there is one player that has a chance of passing Victor Wimbenyama to be the first pick in the 2023 NBA draft, it is Scoot Henderson. All right. Now, I want to talk to you about Rock Auto. And actually, I need to make a call to Rock Auto today because something is wrong with my car, but I I really think I should just trade it in. But with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, It is now impossible for your local chain or auto parts store to stock all the parts that your car needs. So why would you want to go through all the crazy questions and wait for this person behind the counter to order parts on their computer when you have the same access to rockauto.com on your phone or your home computer? You can save time and you can save money when using rockauto.com. No need to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more on the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership when you can go to rockauto.com. For example, the fuel pump on a Honda Odyssey is $353 from a chain store, but if you go to Rock Auto, you get it for $216. And Rock Auto is a family business that is serving do-it-yourselfers, or they have been serving do-it-yourselfers for the past 20 years. Rock Auto's prices are reliably low for every customer, and they have everything that you could need from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil and even new carpet so it's summertime your kids are probably playing outside and spilling ice cream and and all that you can go to rock auto get whatever new carpet whatever you need fixed or not fixed but replaced so go explore their easy to use website today you can find the solution for your auto part needs go to rockauto.com right now you can see all the parts available for your car or your truck right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices on all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. All right. So here's this comment that I've been saving for this last segment. So I have this friend. He is pretty close to Victor Wimbayama. He has worked him out multiple times. He's seen him up close and personal. And he tells me, Victor Wimbayama has a chance to be one of the greatest players ever. Not saying 
one of the best players in the NBA this year. He thinks Victor Wimbayama has a chance to be one of the greatest players ever. He believes that all these comparisons, and I've seen some crazy ones. I saw one that said Wimbayama is the best NBA prospect to enter the league since Anthony Davis. I saw one that said the best prospect to enter since LeBron James. The craziest one is the best big man prospect, or not not big man prospect, but the best big man to enter the NBA since Lou Alcindor. Not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Lou Alcindor. Those are very, very, very lofty expectations when you consider Anthony Davis. Based off of those comments, Anthony Davis is worst case scenario. But when my friend, who I trust, says that he thinks Wimbayama has a shot to be one of the greatest players ever. Now, I already had my opinions on Wimbayama. I already liked him a lot. I've actually seen him play. I went to a game and I watched him play live this year early. And I've told the story before, but for those that haven't heard it, it was my wedding day. <laughs> and uh, I, was in, I was in Paris and uh, me and my wife got married, like crack of dawn in the morning. And uh, looked at my phone. It was just, you know, I'm a basketball junkie. Eat, sleep, breathe it. And I look and I'm like, oh, Paris basketball is playing Asheville, which Wimbayama is now transferring to Paris basket. And um, so I was like, hey, you want to go to the game? She agreed. So we went. And um, it, it's very funny because we watched him play against Ishmael Kamagata. And, and my wife, she likes basketball. But she, you know, she's not a basketball scout. So I, I tell her that this, this kid right here, this really slim kid, this is the guy. And, you know, there are multiple NBA front office executives in the crowd. And um, she's like, he's so skinny. Like, you know, he's going to break. <laughs> and so during the game, he, he struggled uh, a little bit. He got into some foul trouble because Ishmael Kamagate, I mean, just to be honest with you, outplayed him. He was too physical, too strong. So I had to, like, explain to my wife, like, yes, this this kid is projected to be the number one player. But, you know, in her eyes, he's like, she's like, he fouled out. He's too skinny. How can he play against grown men? Of course, she doesn't know how to project upside three four five years down the road but so when i've seen him play i've I've seen like the physical gifts i've seen the talent the length how well he moves there are a little bit of questions about the role that he'll play early in his nba career because even though he can shoot i don't know if he's that good of a shooter to where you can put him in a a box as a knockdown shooter that is going to make defenses respect to shooting and then he's not strong enough to post up right now or, or really do much in the paint but once he does get there I mean the touch is there I mean he can shoot off movement so think about how Jabari Smith was coming off screens whether it's like um, not necessarily always pin downs but like sliding threes lifts Wimbayama can do that and again if he gets stronger with his touch around the rim his vertical lob threat ability and the shooting he could be really really special but for my friend to say, he thinks he could be one of the best ever. And I mean, he said this with a straight face. Best ever. He's like Raf, Best ever. But the thing that stood out to him most, not was his talent or, you know, his length. He said the mentality. He said he wants to be the best. He wants to compete. He is mentally strong. He's tough. And he has this desire to be the best. So. It's still a long ways to go before I can find out if my friend is right or wrong. But we're talking about someone that has worked with tons of NBA players. He's seen a lot of things. But for him to say Victor Wimbayama could be one of the best ever, it definitely caught my attention. Well, that wraps up this episode again. This is something you're going to be hearing about all season long. Wimbayama or Scoot, Wimbayama or Scoot. But... Again, there may be some surprises. Like I said, last year we didn't have Jabari Smith in our in our conversation for number one pick. You got the the twins, the Thompson twins from Overtime Elite, who I think have an outside shot. Um, then there's a guy that I don't know if he'll be number one, but I'm high on. I think that he could have a Jaden Ivy type sophomore season, and that is Terquavion Smith from NC State. I think that he could be someone that has a out small outside chance of, of being i think he should be at least a top five pick um another guy that i'm a little biased at looking forward to seeing 
is Keontae George. He's going to Baylor. He is a, a Dallas kid, and I've had a chance to watch him play in, in high school a lot. I think he's going to be special. Then there's Nick Smith Jr. My first time watching him play live was, I want to say like two years ago, they had a, a McDonald's All-American Wooten camp, and he came in. He was kind of highly touted, but he left that camp as, in my opinion, the, the best player there. And so he's going to Arkansas, 6'5", point guard, maybe – combo guard he has a chance to to be in that range then there's cam whitmore who's going to villanova derek whitehead and Derek lively both of those guys are going to duke so they could be up there but we'll see again this is early it is only june 27th we're not even in july yet and i'm talking about the 2023 nba draft but once again it's rafael barlow NBA Draft Junkie slash NBA Big Board signing out. Once again, thank each and every person for making this podcast a success. But now I want to talk to you about the Locked On NBA. And I want that to be your first listen. Of course, I'm a little biased. I want the Locked On NBA Big Board to be your first listen of the day. But for your second listen, get up to date on the latest news and rumors in the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with the Locked On NBA podcast. Locked on NBA is your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. And this is going to be a crazy week. I mean, we got free agency. We got this whole Kyrie situation. So it should be, I shouldn't say should be, it will be worth your while. All right, that's it. I'm Rafael Barlow. Thanks again. And I am out.